How long does it take for muscle growth to plateau? To infinity and beyond. According to this 2017 review study out of the USA, it plateaus quicker than you think. Based on an array of experiments examining the time course of muscle growth, the authors make some bold statements. Regarding the lower body muscles, they say, These studies support the hypothesis that a large percentage of an individual's muscle growth potential will likely be achieved within the first three months of training. They go on to say, It seems unlikely that individuals will increase their muscle mass by appreciable amounts beyond what is gained by the time of plateau. Regarding the upper body, they say, Initial statistical change in muscle size from baseline often occurred prior to weeks 4-6 to six of training, with a plateau 3-4 to four weeks after this initial response. They go on to say, It can be expected that muscle growth is unlikely to meaningfully increase further in a trained population. Many would agree these statements seem extraordinarily surprising, and perhaps controversial. In this video, we're going to examine the research behind these statements, with the aim of answering the question, does muscle growth plateau far quicker than we think? Let's get into it. Let's detail some of the research that led the authors of that review study to make the statements they did. First, we have this 1999 study out of Japan, which had 37 untrained individuals perform these exercises with these training variables. Both the men and women of the study saw a significant drop-off in quadriceps development by the 8th week of training. Furthermore, the men in the study saw notable drop-offs in biceps and triceps growth by week 8, while the women in the study also tended to see a triceps growth plateau by the 8th week. A 2011 study out of the USA had untrained men train the leg press and leg extension with these training variables and established thigh growth tended to level off after 6 weeks of training. A 2013 study out of Brazil had subjects train eccentric leg extensions with these variables and found rectus femoris growth tended to level off at the 8 week mark. A 2015 study out of England had subjects train leg extensions with these training variables and found the vastus lateralis grew well from week 0 to week 3, but did not really grow much further from week 3 to week 6. Now, progressive overload was applied in these studies, so a lack of progressive overload cannot explain the plateaus. The studies just overviewed are highly interesting and collectively support the author's conclusions that muscle hypertrophy shows signs of plateauing and notably dropping off within three months. Yet, are there studies opposing this? There are two. A study out of Japan all the way back from 1970 had untrained men train maximal isometric biceps contractions with these training variables and found muscle growth did not show signs of plateauing across 100 days. Another 1996 study out of Switzerland had untrained men train leg extensions with these training variables. Quadriceps growth continued to increase consistently across 6 months of training. Thus, we do have some data indicating muscle growth shows no signs of plateauing within 3 months. Despite this opposing data, the other studies suggesting muscle growth levels of notably within 3 months still exist. Because the results are so surprising, I know it can be easy just to ignore the data and pretend it does not exist. However, this is not good scientific practice, so I don't believe we should discard or ignore them. Rather, I think we should assess them a little further and try to evaluate their limitations. And as we'll see in a second, there are notable limitations with the data, and from them, we can derive some useful conclusions that can help you yourself limit plateaus. A major limitation with the studies observing signs of plateauing within 3 months is none of them mentioned factors away from training, and this includes nutrition. Given the subjects were previously untrained and given no nutritional instructions, it's reasonable to assume many were not eating optimally for muscle hypertrophy. 
This matters as both caloric and protein intake have been shown to modulate the amount of muscle growth you experience. A 2002 study out of the USA had previously untrained men weight trained for 8 weeks and found subjects consuming a 2000 calorie surplus gained around 3 kilograms in body mass and virtually all of this was fat free mass. Another group eating at approximately calorie maintenance saw much lower changes in body and fat free mass. A 2019 study out of Brazil found in competitive bodybuilders, higher calorie consumption, around 6,500 calories, produced greater muscle mass gains versus a lower calorie consumption, around 4,500 calories. This review study summarizes calorie surplus recommendations for untrained and trained folks. Protein intake is also notable. This 2018 meta-analysis out of Canada observed on the basis of 49 studies that intakes up to 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight enhanced fat-free mass gains. With all this in mind, we may arrive at a different interpretation of the studies finding signs of plateaus within 3 months. Namely, the data may demonstrate untrained individuals can see significant muscle growth while not optimizing variables outside the gym for 3 months or so. But to experience appreciable adaptations further, optimizing variables outside the gym, nutrition being a critical one here, likely becomes progressively more important. Another limitation of the studies demonstrating muscle growth plateaus within 3 months is that there was minimal variation in the training variables used. Except for the fact progressive overload was applied, all other variables, including exercise selection, volume, and rep ranges, were maintained. Exercise selection is potentially a notable one. All the studies had subjects train their muscle groups with largely only one exercise. It's possible training a muscle group with a few different exercises in a program is beneficial for sustaining long-term gains. But more research is needed to verify this. At the very least though, performing a few different exercises per muscle group in a program does tend to grow more regions across that muscle. Demonstrating this is a 2021 study out of Brazil. A non-varied group performed the same exercises for their muscle groups across 3 sessions per week. A varied group, on each of the 3 days per week, performed different exercises per muscle group. Before and after 8 weeks of training, growth of the upper, middle and lower regions of the rectus femoris, vastus lateralis, elbow flexors and triceps was measured. Overall, though gains in some regions were similar between groups, the varied groups saw more gains in other regions. Thus, exercise variety can cause growth in more regions of a muscle. With regards to rep ranges, training with a single rep range potentially could be suboptimal for hypertrophy. Now, most studies lasting 12 weeks or less find muscle growth to be similar between training with a single rep range or using a mix of different rep ranges. But one study with a 9 month duration recruited previously untrained women, with one group using the same rep range across 3 sessions per week, and another group varying their rep ranges across 3 sessions per week. Ultimately, increases in fat free mass were greater for the group varying their rep ranges. Now, I should mention this is a single study, and more research is needed to verify whether varying rep ranges truly promotes greater muscle growth in the long term. Volume, in the form of sets performed, is also a notable factor. There's emerging research suggesting in trained individuals, modestly increasing the number of sets performed enhances muscle growth. For example, a study from USA had trained men who back squatted an average 165 kilograms, trained their quadriceps with a variety of weekly set numbers. Fundamentally, their results established that those who grew their anterior thigh the most were the individuals who performed an average 6 more weekly sets for the quadriceps compared to what they were doing before the study. Lower responders, that's individuals who grew their anterior thigh less, only performed 1-4 to four more weekly sets for the quadriceps compared to what they were doing before the study. Another 2022 study out of Brazil recruited trained men and had them train the unilateral leg extension and unilateral leg press twice per week for 8 weeks. With one leg, each subject individually performed 20% more weekly sets for their quadriceps 
than what they were doing before the study. With their other leg, all subjects performed a prescribed number of weekly sets for the quadriceps. This was 22 weekly sets. It was found vastus lateralis growth was greater for the leg performing 20% more weekly sets. So a progressive increase in weekly sets, 20%, seems to be beneficial for muscle growth. An interesting point is for 8 out of the 16 subjects, the prescribed number of 22 weekly sets was actually more than 20% of the weekly sets they'd been performing for their quadriceps before the study. It ranged from being 30% to 120% more weekly sets than usual for these subjects. Yet, results still favoured the leg that performed 20% more weekly sets. This finding emphasises that larger jumps in weekly sets, 30-120%, to 120%, are not necessarily better than more modest, 20%, increases in weekly sets for muscle hypertrophy. Therefore, these two studies suggest modestly increasing the number of sets you perform may be an extremely effective way to get past plateaus. All of the studies finding signs of plateaus understandably had subjects train week after week. Yet, as we've explored in a previous video, there's some research suggesting training breaks may be effective for restoring responsivity to training and perhaps enhancing long-term muscle and strength gains. For example, this study from Japan had men train the barbell bench press with these training variables. One group trained for 24 weeks straight, a continuous group, while another group trained for 6 weeks, rested for 3 weeks, and repeated this for a total 24 weeks, a periodic group. Ultimately, growth of the triceps and pectoris major, as well as bench press 1 rep max strength gains, ended up being similar between both groups. This was possible because the continuous group rate of gains gradually slowed down. In other words, they were nearing a plateau, whereas the periodic group, despite losing muscle and strength during the three-week breaks, gained muscle and strength at faster rates during their training weeks. The training breaks taken by the periodic group may have resensitized their body, thereby explaining their faster rate of muscle and strength gains during the training weeks. For more details on training breaks, check out the full research breakdown we did on it. But I should mention more research is needed to truly establish the effectiveness of training breaks, but the current research is promising and an individual may wish to experiment with it depending on their interpretations of the data, as well as their feelings on it. In summary, we do have research showing muscle growth may show signs of plateauing within 3 months of training. Yet, I don't believe this data proves muscle growth truly plateaus in this time period. Rather, I believe the data demonstrates an untrained person can see great gains while not worrying about dialing in other factors for 3 months or so. But to experience further appreciable gains, dialing in other factors, such as calorie and protein intake, becomes progressively more important with training experience. As we know the subjects in the mentioned studies likely did not optimize nutritional factors. Moreover, training factors also matter. Exercise and rep range variation are potential strategies for better long-term gains, though more research is needed to validate this. Emerging evidence also suggests that modestly increasing the number of sets you perform may be helpful for getting past plateaus and enhancing muscle growth. Finally, training breaks could be beneficial for resensitizing your body to training stimuli. Due to everything we've overviewed in this video, needless to say I don't agree with the conclusions of the review study we mentioned at the start of the video. With a well-designed training program and lifestyle, I think it's very likely individuals can see appreciable muscle development across numerous years. Moreover, we see this in the real world. Individuals can see notable improvements despite having numerous years of prior experience.